So we're uh, Thursday, um, really, really beautiful day today. And I'm just about to do just a little bit of pruning, but I was very jealous of Nigel because all his um, all his larches are ready for the pruning. This is where mine are now, and I imagine this is a week after he made his larch forest pruning. But this is uh, two larches on, uh, on Welsh rock. And slowly I've been just trying to develop those layers that you're seeing. But um, at the moment, it's, it's absolutely at its best. It's what I love it most. The Dawn Redwoods. And I've got uh, a full uh, clip of that I'm going to show you when I get around eventually to doing the pruning on these. But these two, the wire's still on. Um, but what you can see, hopefully, amongst the sun dappling, is that beautiful separation and layering that's starting to happen now as a result of all that wiring I did earlier. Um, again, I apologise that that wiring video didn't come out as well as I should have hoped. I've got some noise going on, but yeah, so really nice. I'm very, very shortly due to start doing the, uh, the pruning on all my maples, and as I say, there's tens and tens of them, but it's lovely to see them in such beautiful plumage. This is the, uh, the cobra, I call it the cobra because of uh, a very distinct flaring of the trunk. Yeah. Um, the only thing I have to watch with those maples now is that uh, the bugs, the aphids, absolutely adore them. This is the first year when all that work I've done trying to develop some, some prim uh, primary and secondary branch structure is now starting to pay off as we've got some really, really healthy looking clouds developing uh, as we work our way up to the top of the tree. There. So. This year again, I will probably ignore the late May prune and go for the uh, the second pruning, which I'll do sometime in probably in early July. Um, a little duck-billed dinosaur and uh, and watchbird are looking good there. That's how that uh, oak forest is now starting to look with uh, leaves all starting to come out. And what you're being uh, masked for right in the foreground is obviously uh, my big oak project which was in an earlier video first of all look at that that's all my grass now all we need is that trident to uh, to grow into a, a nice six foot feeder tree for my future but uh, you remember I wired up a lot of the uh, the ginkgo to show you one I mean these will these will get a, a post flush hardened pruning probably in June but look this one I love it this is the one I spent loads of time wiring out. And now you've got that lovely, lovely, distinctive ginkgo leaf. It's looking really, really good. Really happy with that. Yeah, um, for those of you who look at my website, um, you'll know that I had real concerns over my first ever expensive tree, which is a Japanese white pine. Um, it had a problem with um, some root fungus or something. I never really did identify it, but I did an emergency repot into this great big thing um, and I've noticed that all the little candles are starting to push out across across the range of the branches so that, uh, that white pine has made it so you know I, uh, I did the emergency repot at the wrong time of the year um, really really panicking um, and it took a year, but uh, now we've got loves, lovely load of candles all coming up on it. But uh, it just goes to show, never ever give up. Okay, now as I said, I mean you'll have seen some video, or maybe you haven't, of these oaks um, over the last few weeks. Got their, um, their secondary pots. Um, as I say, most of them were uh, transplanted from the ground two years ago. Um, but they've all now been put into uh, smaller training pots where the roots are doing well. There's a, a few more down there, some of the bigger ones. Um, <laughs> the lemons are still there. And then I've still got a few, a few smaller ones there. And again, these ones here, which I'd never really got to. Up here, there's some of the small marmes that are in development phase. This isn't the stuff that I'm really looking at anyone uh, <laughs> even considering as, uh, as near ready. 
some of the uh, the Chinese elms. These have all come as a result of cuttings. Um, pulled them out of the ground a year ago. And this is, say, the lower benches. They're not really stuff that's ready for display, but it's a right old um, potpourri of stuff. A lot of the larches that have now been uh, repotted and have all budded out and looking really good. <laughs> Finally got the wire off those two um, box. So I'll do some work on those later in the year. It's a grand old oak there. Um, say so some more uh, some more larch, Yamadori yeah, larch. Little you in there. And there's a bird and an ambulance. And uh, certainly it looks like uh, the apple tree's uh, coming through okay. I mean, obviously that branch definitely is dead. But we've got a lot of green up there. So I'm really, really happy with that. And just fingers crossed it keeps on, uh, keeps on growing. Okay, this is one of my uh, trident maples. Um, and this is one that uh, suffered really badly in the frost last year. Um, here there was actually quite a nice apex just here. Um, but the frost destroyed all the buds, uh, which means I lost this probably about an inch here um, and lost a lot of the uh, supporting branches either side. Uh, as I say, and what I've done this year is allowed this one to just, this grows out, it's about a foot and a half now. And I'm going to let it keep going and I don't know whether I'll sort of put a bit of movement in it but at the moment I just want to try and create something here. Uh, it doesn't look great at the moment, it's like a bridge at the moment. But I've got something developing from either side here. It's a shame it was definitely a lot further along before the frosts. But it just goes to show that you can still regrow from uh, what was basically nothing. All these exposed roots, um, the reason why I've had to keep it like this is because actually there's a double set of root layers here, here, lower down, and then there's another set underneath there. And I just thought it looks really sort of mangrovey interesting. But yeah, so this has got a lot of development to go now, but it's in a Dawn Isaac uh, olive pot, beautiful pot. I mean, technically it's not the most brilliant. It's got all the classic uh, markers that tell you it's been a, an import tree. Um, ugliness here from an old wire scars. Some really rough and heavy hand pruning there. Trunk chops, branches going at odd angles. But I love this, I love this. This one suffered badly from uh, from frosts um, and really I had no growth on this last year at all and I was so uh, so given up with it that I actually thought you know what took off nearly all the growth that was there um, again we've got this ugly quite weird weird root structure there but I've put a rock under there you know I like to put rocks under things um, I can't remember how well I've secured or whether that's actually a bigger rock or not. But I'll find out in two or three years time. So we'll give it a 360. Again it's a, it's certainly interesting. Um, and again the, the classic import shape of this odd sort of half a cup look. I mean it really is ugly. Um, whether the front's going to be nearer there, but then I want to use this root structure. I don't know. It's a long way to go, but to be honest, this day and age, it's a trident maple. So, you know, it's over 12 years old. And they do grow profusely when they're healthy, so it can always be fixed. Okay, uh, another, I think this was purchased in, I think this was a 2018 trident. Rebuilding the top. Again, frost damage, but I'm going to take that as a, uh, a cutting later in the year, grow on a new one from that or maybe two from that. So that'll put the uh, top of the tree there. Get quite a nice shape, I just need to get stuff filling in. 
Again, some interesting, if not uh, unorthodox, brand structure in there, courtesy of the, uh, the import process and how they make these. But not a bad example, it's healthy. And as I say, what I do like is that slowly each year I do manage to salvage some uh, pretty decent cuttings, um, which is, as you've seen, floor down the bottom of the garden with rocks and stuff on them. So, yeah, certainly healthier than it was after last year's frost. Got a little. Oh, let's get rid of that. That's a few of them on there. Unusual, don't normally see the scale on these tridents. You certainly don't want them there. That's the other thing to do. You need to keep an eye on your tree. No, I've, to be honest, I've um, never actually had scale issue with the tridents. Gosh, good out, frost and scale. Okay, this next, uh, this next maple, it's just I say we had sixth or seventh one in now. Again, these wire scars were a lot more obvious a couple of years ago. Um, just browning now. Um, and over time that's going to... This is another one that suffered heavily from frost and there's also lots of black tips. Again, I mean, so if anyone's got an answer to that, because it happens to all of them. Um, it doesn't seem to unduly affect the health of the tree. It's just a bit unsightly. Um, and I must be honest, I tend to clip the edges and let the younger growth come through. It's typical, I've waited all morning and now someone decides to do some drilling. Anyway, I'll give you a 360 on it. Through there is a bit of the rock. I've got it um, wired onto some rock and hopefully that'll be a decent route over rock soon enough. But this is definitely, although it's, it's got some nice thickness there, there's a lot of ugliness that needs to be removed, um, work on the trunk, um, and I still need to really do some work on the primary secondary structure. But it's got all the makings of a decent tree, it's just uh, a few more years down the line, I think. This is actually, uh, again, it's, I think it's the, it's the top third of a trident. Something went wrong with this, this is, because actually that's root, so it's not that can't remember if, I think actually, no, thinking back to it, I remember now, the main trunk came up like that, and something happened, and I ended up having to take it right back. I think it was heavily wire scarred, and, I, and, I, and that's the reason why I got it, was because I knew that I was going to be able to do something with these lower branches that were just hanging around. And again, this is um, perfectly, it's no more than seven inches, seven inches in height probably from the top of the pot. I haven't got the potting angle right, I think it's nearer there. But uh, nice and healthy. Yeah, so. Uh, this is one of the, uh, the smaller, smaller tridents. Oh, everyone's out drilling now, it's fantastic. You'd think we're in a residential street. <laughs> so I'll just give you a 360, there's nothing much. I mean, again, you've always got with all of these imported stock, these odd non-organic designs about them, which you have to work around. Um, they'll all invariably have some sort of wire scarring. It's the remnants of some scarring there. Um, but it's about how you can make the most of some of these features. I mean, you've got this big collar here. And again, I'm not quite sure how that's come about, but you're never going to be able to do anything with that. Okay. Um, I did some work here where that original main branch, the main trunk was uh, shortened. You've actually got two two points there which have been removed but I could hollow that out yeah okay this next example is uh, is a much better much better example of a, a smaller trident um, and though it's still got some of your 
lumpy, ugly scars on the trunk. You've got a, a more classic feminine form to it. Um, I mean, this branch doesn't come out as it should, but it doesn't detract from the tree. Um, uh, and this one is, in its most curious one, probably the, the closest to how I would want it to be if I was ever looking to purchase it. You've got some minor wire scarring in here, but again, over time, that's going to fade out. Good spread of foliage on it. Interesting root base. Some really interesting weeds growing there. I like those weeds, they, uh, they add to the tree so much. Um, yeah. Yeah, one of my favourite smaller trident maples, definitely. Um, it's just such a shame they're nearly impossible to find these days. Nearly impossible to find. I think the birds are agreeing with me. But this trident was, uh, has come back so vigorous and strong. This is really how you want to see all the leaves, and this is how I'd like to see all of them looking. Um, I had this in a growing bed for two or three years, uh, probably dug it out again two years ago. Um, can't remember now what the problem was. I think I had a real problem with all the leaves, and I put it down to a, a root, a root problem. And I remember reading somewhere that sometimes the only answer to that is uh, to get them back into the ground. So I put it straight back into the ground along with one or two others, left it for a few years, just let it go wild, and then uh, say brought it back out two years ago. And uh, to be fair, it's, um, it has really benefited from that. Um, I was going to put it into a bonsai pot this year, but I thought, you know what, let's give it another, another, another year um, and uh, get it into a, a decent Dawn Isaac ceramic next year. Again, another of the, uh, the better examples of the smaller, smaller maples. Um, um, but yeah, so I've got this interesting area here where it's quite a large, large wound there. Um, that was on the tree before I got it, sort of four years ago. But it's uh, I cleaned it up a bit and it's, 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 I think it's quite interesting. Um, I'm more worried about the scale now. Looks like I'm going to have to spend some time uh, descaling all these maples. Another one there. There we go. All right, put them on the chair and I'm sure my daughters will be happy sitting on uh, dead scale. It's a lovely looking tree, lovely looking tree. And I think it's got potted, it's got repotted. I think last year, I normally, something like this could sit in this pot for two to three years. I know for sure this one was definitely taken from the apex of one of the other trees. Um, it was, I think it had a, two apexes, apices, I don't know. Um, and in the end I decided to remove this one. And I literally just threw it in soil a couple of years ago to see what would happen. Um, and as I say, that's pencil thickness. And it, um, it rooted. Um, as I say, with all the, the trident maples, they, they tend to be pretty successful with, um, with doing cuttings from quite thick, thick healthy uh, growth. Um, and now this is going to turn into a really, really nice. I mean, it's no more than probably four to five inches from top of the pot. Um, yeah, this is the, uh, the the little branch cutting. I think it's actually taken as a sort of just under half a pencil thickness cutting. But say so that's been in soil for in a pot for two years, and then uh, just went into this the. I think I'll put it there this March. Just let this grow, I'm gonna let this grow out now. Try and give it a chance to thicken and and get some character of its own, but I think another sort of two, three, four years as the makings of a of a good homegrown tree. One that I can say is courtesy of expressions, not the import service. <laughs>